House of Squibb presents the finest in motion picture entertainment, Academy Awards. The House of Squibb, manufacturing chemist to the medical profession since 1858, bring you Academy Awards. The pictures, the players, the techniques and skills which have won or been nominated for the coveted awards granted each year by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to each in his field for outstanding achievement. Each week, Squib on the Air brings you only the finest performances. Squib in your home brings you only the finest medicinal products, pure, effective, reliable. Squib, a name you can trust. Tonight's picture is Kitty Foyle. Tonight's star is the distinguished RKO player, Miss Ginger Rogers. And now, Miss Ginger Rogers. Thank you. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My hope is that some of our excitement and pleasure in reenacting these Academy Award roles will be communicated itself to you through our performances. Also, it would be ungrateful of me if we were to do Kitty Foyle tonight without thanking the men who brought Kitty to the screen. So thank you, David Hempstead and Sam Wood. Kitty Foyle was written for radio by Frank Wilson with an original musical score composed and conducted by Lee Stevens. And our producer-director is D. Engelbach. Academy Award, starring Ginger Rogers in her 1940 Academy Award winning role of Kitty Foyle. Kitty! Kitty! Kitty girl! Yes, Pop? Shut that dang thing up! I can't, Pop! I can't! I'm going too fast! I'm on a sleigh ride! A sleigh ride. Well, it seems my whole life was spent on a sleigh ride. First it was Wynne Strafford, my mainline Prince Charming. But now it seems to be Mark Eisen, a good, dependable, trustworthy Mike. Mark, it was spring again in New York. And as Mark drove me home that evening, I had a hunch that this might be the spring of all my years. Here we are, Kitty. Pocahontas Hotel, home of lonely women. Uh, Kitty, wait. Yes, Mark. Kitty, will you... Will you take this ring? Oh, Mark. Well, you see, I, I've got lots of money tied up in this golden hoop, and there's no other way I can get any use out of it. Well, can't you find my finger, Mark? You... You did say yes, didn't you? I mean, it's, it's, it's all clear. There's no confusion. Mm. You understand what I asked you. You asked me to marry you, didn't you? Oh, that's it. Exactly. I got it. That's why I said yes. Kitty, what I'm getting around to, that, that fellow in Philadelphia, that's all over, huh? All over. Oh, then we're getting married tomorrow. <laughs> Meet me at the hospital tonight, huh? Midnight. Mm -hmm. We'll go straight to Greenwich. Yes, Mark. I guess this will be farewell of the Pocahontas. Kiss all those dear old bachelor girls goodbye for me. <laughs> I'll kiss them all, and then I'll pack like mad. Okay. And meet me at St. Timothy's Hospital at 12. Smack on the dot. 12, smack on the dot, St. Timothy's. Ah, oh, good evening, Miss Foyle. Good evening. My key, please. Thank you. Oh, will you make up my bill tonight? Oh, you're leaving? I'll say I am, Joe. I'm getting married. Oh, please send for my bags around 11.30. Right. <laughs> Hello, Kitty. When? What are you doing in my room? You sent for me. I sent for you? You sent back the ring. Well, Kitty, remember what I told you? If you ever needed me or wanted me, or would have me, send the ring back to me. Oh, I forgot. I. That wasn't what I meant. 
I sent it back because that was all. That was the end. Don't say that, Kitty. Oh, Kitty, there's no life for me without you. I want you. I need you. I love you this minute as I've never loved you before. But when it's too late. Five years too late. No, Kitty, it'll never be too late. What we had can't die. I'm asking that we leave together for South America and be together always. Oh, when? Don't ask me anything. Don't let me think. Oh, darling, at last it all comes true. And will we live happily ever after? Forever and ever. When will we go? We sail at midnight. I'll be at the pier with everything arranged. Now, will you meet me there? Mm-hmm. Pier 48, mm-hmm. midnight. Mm-hmm. Oh, Kitty, I love you. Don't be late. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. When I... When? Wait, when? Well, Kitty Foyle, here we go again. Maybe this time it's for keeps. You're making a mistake, you know. You're still on that sleigh ride. Oh, marriage isn't everything. What is it anyway? It's just a little piece of paper. A lot of fine things come out of that little piece of paper, Kitty. A home, children. That's where Mark comes in again. And you'd be a lot happier with Mark and that little piece of paper than you ever could be with Wynn. You know what I think? I think you're wrong. <laughs> I remember you using those words once before. Remember way back when you lived on Grisgan Street in Philadelphia? And Pop, what a grand guy he was. <laughs> Ah, Kitty. I guess an old heathen like me never had any business trying to raise a daughter anyhow. I wanted to keep you from stubbing your toe. I thought you had all this junk rooted out of your mind. What junk? Cinderella and her blasted prince. Kitty, don't you see? It's... Oh, it's no good. Don't argue, Pop. I love him. You, this priest. (laughs) You said it. You mean you want to marry? Win Strafford? Mm Mm-hmm. Has he ever asked you to meet his family? Pop, he doesn't even know I love him yet big secret. But I've never worried much about his family because I've got a funny idea. I'm just as good as they are. Kitty, by Judas Priest, you're going to break your heart. It was so easy to fall in love with him. You were doing it from the start. Falling in love with your boss. But there's no getting around it. Those were probably the happiest days in your life. Crazy, but nice. Like the first time he took you to New York. I've never been in a speakeasy before. Best people in New York come here. (laughs) Ah, here we are, Mr. Strafford. My last bottle of Strega. Oh, thanks, Giono. Uh, What's a Strega? It's Italian brandy. Oh, I know. They say if two people drink it together, they'll never drink it apart. When? Why did you bring me here? Well, four or five years ago, I got into this place of Giono's. I liked it. I liked it because all of a sudden I felt free here. Philadelphia, the main line, all of those things that order my life, they disappear the minute I enter that door. Well, I wanted to make a good impression on you, so I brought you where I thought I most likely could do it. Well, when I didn't mean to criticize you, Kitty. I was just... Yeah. Kitty, I've got an idea. Yeah. Will you go to the assembly with me this year? Me? Are you kidding? No, cross my heart. That's funny. You know, when I was a little girl, I I used to read in the papers about the assembly in Philadelphia, Mm -hmm. cut out the pictures of the society ladies in their beautiful dresses and use them for paper dolls. Yeah, that's probably the best use they've ever been put to. I know they've got rules and a committee that goes over the list of those invited and... They come across somebody like Foyle, boom, and the next thing you know, you're being scraped up off the sidewalk. <laughs> you leave that to me. My mother's on that committee. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh, Wynn. Have you ever had a dream come to life right in front of your very eyes? No, but I'm still hoping. <laughs> Is it a date, Kitty? I'm crazy, I know, but it's a date. Come on. Let's get our wraps and get out of this smoky den. Where are we going? I've got to go home pretty soon. We're going to Lake Pocono just for an hour. See the sunset. But it's already set. Uh, we see the moon rise. I'll get you home in time for supper. Come on, Kitty. It's not much of a drive, and you belong in moonlight. Uh, 
Lake Pocono and Wynn's Lodge in the mountains, snug and comfortable, exciting, and a million miles from everything but moonlight. Remembering that night is like putting your tongue in a sore tooth, that same sharp little twinge. Funny how love makes a woman quiet and a man talkative. But Lancelot mused a little space. He said, she has a lovely face. God in his mercy lend her grace, the Lady of Shalott. Isn't that beautiful, darling? Mm. Tell me about beauty, teacher. Gladly. As you know, it's a man's duty to instruct woman in all subjects. Now you pick the subject. No. We've only got a few minutes, but um, tell me where we are. We are in the Pocono Mountains, mm -hmm. situated in the state of Pennsylvania. No, no but um, where are we really? In heaven? No. In love. Tell me about love. Well, first, there was a man. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And there was a woman. Uh -huh. Oh, what did the man and the woman do? Well, at first, they just hung around. And one night a strange thing happened. What? They were sitting in front of a fire like this, and the firelight played upon the woman's face. And uh -huh. The man, for the first time, saw how beautiful she was. Looking into her eyes, he suddenly beheld all the wonders of life. So, immediately, he made love to her. Well, uh, didn't the woman object? No. She loved him, too. Why? Well... Because he was everything that she had ever dreamed of. Oh, my darling. I love you, Wynne. It couldn't go on like that. It just couldn't. Who did you ever think you were, Kitty Foyle? That you could live rent-free and forever in paradise? Didn't you see it coming... Didn't you know the magazine was bound to fail? Couldn't you tell that he would say the things he said because, well, being him, he couldn't have said anything else? Did you have to hurt inside as if he'd stabbed you with a knife? Yes, Kitty Foyle, you did. Well, the magazine's done. It's folded. It's finished. Ten thousand my mother gave me spent. Now what will you do? Me? Oh, oh that's right. I'm out of a job. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I might get one in New York. I can't let you do that. Why? Why not? Because it, it's just silly. Besides, it'd be too far apart. Well, it is in China. Kitty. Well, this is kind of delicate, but... Yeah, well, go on. Your father isn't very well, and you're all alone, and it's too much for you to handle. Yeah? I mean, I feel that I'm kind of responsible. It isn't your fault the magazine failed, and so... Well, until you get another job, I don't want you to have to worry about money. What do you mean? I'll just... just keep you on the payroll. It's only fair, you know, because... Just a minute. You don't need to worry about me, Wynn. I'm free, white, and 21, or almost. And I'd love you from here on out, or until I stop loving you. But nobody owes a thing to Kitty Foyle. Except Kitty Foyle. Kitty. Wait. Kitty! Before continuing with part two of Ginger Rogers' Academy Award winning performance of Kitty Foyle, let's look in on the RKO lot where they are shooting the final scenes of Ginger's new picture... Sam Wood's production of Heartbeat. All right, boys. <laughs> Here we are. Much like Alice in Wonderland, isn't it? Walking into a strange new world. Had you any idea it took so many skills and crafts to make a fine picture? Here's a young lady we might persuade to talk to us for a second. Oh, miss. Hello. Uh, hello. May I ask what your job is on this lot? Sure. I'm a makeup girl. Right now, I'm working on Heartbeat. That's Miss Rogers' new picture, you know. Yes, I know. That must keep you pretty busy, doesn't it? I'll say it does. But it's worth it. Just wait till you see Ginger Rogers in this one. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to that. But tell me, in your job of makeup, 
I imagine the smile is pretty important, isn't it? Yes, sir. The smile is everything. Well, same in my business. You see, Squib Dental Cream encourages a sparkling smile, and it refreshes your mouth at the same time. Everyone enjoys the minty taste of Squib Dental Cream. It's so cool and fresh. Yes, I know. And did you know that the polishing agent in Squib Dental Cream is one of the safest, softest, yet most effective known to dental science? Well, I'm glad to know. And did you know that pure Squib Dental Cream has to pass more than 100 separate tests before it touches your brush? It's just one more evidence of the scientific care that goes into the making of this quality dentifrice. Use Squib Dental Cream regularly. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. And now for part two of tonight's picture, Kitty Foyle, starring the Academy Award winner, Miss Ginger Rogers. You thought you were off the sleigh ride, Kitty Foyle, when you took your shattered little pieces of pride and went to New York to ring the Liberty Bell, but you were wrong. Getting a job selling perfume, meeting a swell guy like Mark, Hiding your pain in the crowds, no dice, Kitty Foyle. You were still on that sleigh, and you had a ticket in your heart for the entire trip. Molly, where are you? For heaven's sake, what's going on here? I don't know. I got home, and they started coming. Somebody's nuts. I know the delivery boy like a brother right now. You should see what's in the bathtub. Water lilies. And and look at these. A hothouse we got. (laughs) A million dollars worth of flowers, and they're all for you. For me? Mm. Well, who are they? Well, they're from Wynn. It's Wynn. Come in. Wynn. Wynn. Kitty. Oh, Wynn, how did you ever find me? I just followed my heartbeats. Here. Presents. Shall I go outside while you dress, or can I just close my eyes? What do you mean, dress? We have a date tonight for the assembly. Only ours is going to be right here in New York. Oh, when? You remember. Hey, I I hope you like this dress. Oh, Gold M.A. Oh, when? Kitty. (laughs) Kitty, I forgot to tell you. What? How much I love you. Oh. Oh, how much do you love me? I said as much as you love me, would that be enough? Oh, darling. If that were true, there wouldn't be any love left for anybody else in the whole world. Having fun? Mm, I'm dancing in a dream. Our very own private assembly ball. At the Ritz. <laughs> Here, I've got something for you. Yeah. What? What is it? A ring, darling. Wow, well, odd. But it's beautiful. It was my great grandmother's. Oh. It's a symbol of eternal life. A snake eating its tail. You see? Oh, I see. A symbol of eternal life for my great grandmother to me and you and to those that come after us forever. It's our family. When? Why? Uh... Are you giving it to me? Kitty, will you marry me? Oh, well. I can't. You love me now only because we're not in Philadelphia. I'll fix that. Boys, will you play the sidewalks of New York, please? Oh, what's the idea? Oh, that's our song now. We're New Yorkers, both of us. Oh, Darling, no main line, no Philadelphia. Mm. Just you and me, me and you. Dear God, please don't ring the alarm clock for just a little while. Let it go on just as it is now. Just as it is now. Oh, he heard me. It's Sunday morning. Those are wedding bells, darling. Wedding bells for us. And so you were married, Mr. and Mrs. Winwood Strafford VI. 
Remember, you read it over and over when Wynne wrote it on the register of that little hotel in Gretna Green? There's no use denying it. Those two days were just about perfect. And then you went back to Philadelphia to tell Wynne's family. Hello, everybody. Wynne, dear, come in. You remember Kitty, Mother? Indeed, I do. It's so nice to see you again, Miss Foyle. Oh, thank you. You remember my grandmother, yes. Jessica, Uncle Edgar, Uncle Kenneth? Oh, glad to see you again, Miss Foyle. Well, the fact is, the name isn't Foyle anymore, it's Strafford. Kitty and I have been married. <clears throat> oh, why don't you say something? Oh, she's so beautiful, she's taking your breath away. You'll have to forgive me, my dear. I just wasn't prepared for such news. You understand, don't you? Oh, of course. After all, it, it is a surprise. Shall we sit down? Will you have tea? No, no, thank you. When were you married, dear? Monday. I see. We thought, naturally, that Wynne would wait a year. But you understand, of course, that above everything else, we want you and him to be happy. That's first and foremost in our thoughts, isn't it? Oh, uh, yes, of course, course my dear. That's... Well, I don't uh, want to seem rude, but would somebody mind telling me what you're driving at? It's only this, my dear. Mother. Mother. You see, honey, I promised I wouldn't marry you for a year. Mother was going to take you under her wing and prepare you. Prepa prepare me for what? You know, some school, some good finishing school. School? Are you kidding me? No, no, my dear. Let's keep calm. Now, look. Let's get a few things straight around here. I didn't ask to marry the Straffords. The Strafford asked to marry me. I married a man, not an institution or a bank. Oh, I've got a fine picture of your family conferences here. All the Straffords trying to figure out how to take the curse off Kitty Foyle. Buy the girl a phony education and polish off the rough edges and make a mainline doll out of her. <laughs> oh, you ought to know better than that. It takes six generations to make a bunch of people like you, and by Judas Priest, I haven't got that much time. <laughs> Fine words, Kitty Foyle. Well, back to New York and your old job. It's not living, though, when every time you hear a knock on the door, you hope it's somebody you know isn't going to be there. When every time you walk down a street, you think you see him coming through the crowd. And finally, you run into Mark again, and he takes you out for a drink. Poor Mark, he would pick Giono's. What's the matter, Kitty? Don't you like Giono's? Good evening. Oh, uh, give us something kind of special, huh? Maybe Strager? Yes, yes, two of them. Kitty, there's something I want to tell you. Mark, you knew I was married. I... Yes. Well, I'm, I'm not anymore. I, uh, I got my decree today. Here you are. We haven't had any calls for Streg in a long time. Mark, I can't stay here. Mark, it's no use. All the time we're together, I keep thinking of him. And you're too nice to be pushed around, and it's only fair for me to tell you. I see. Let's say goodbye here, Mark. I'm a pretty good doctor, Kitty. But seeing you, I... I wish I'd specialized in heart trouble. <laughs> You were ghost-ridden and haunted, Kitty Foyle. You ran until you couldn't run anymore. And then one day, an item in a Philadelphia paper. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Deveris Gladwin announced the engagement of their daughter, Miss Veronica Gladwin, to Mr. Winwood Strafford VI. Hmm. You thought you could only die once, but you learned. You learned. And time kept on doing business at the same old stand, five years of it. Then they sent you down to Philadelphia to open a branch of the store. You were afraid to go, afraid of all the things it might bring back. But nothing happened until the afternoon of your last day, about half past four. I think I'd better have some perfume, too. Oh, yes, madam. Are you going to the opera or dancing? I'm going to the assembly tonight. I see. What flowers are you wearing? Oh, I hadn't thought yet. I'm glad you mentioned that, because... I usually have to buy them myself. Oh, in that event, I suggest Sanxit perfume with camellias or... A phone call, Mrs. Stafford. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Strathford. Oh, it couldn't be. Hello? Hello? Oh, hello, Wynne. Oh, you don't have to go to New York again, do you? 
But, Wynne, in the five years we've been married, we've never gone to the assembly together. Very well. I'm sorry, but I'll have to leave right away. May I send the perfume to the house with the other things? No. I'll make a selection some other time. The assembly. Tonight. Mrs. Wynne Stafford. Is that all, Miss Boyle? The package is ready to go to Mrs. Stafford. Yes, that's... No. No, wait. Here's something else. Wrap this up. This ring. For Mr. Stratford. You sent back the ring. Kitty, remember what I told you? If you ever needed me or wanted me or would have me, send the ring back to me. That wasn't what I meant. I sent it back because that was all. That was the end. Don't say that, Kitty. But it's true, Wynne. Look, you'll have to go. I'm sailing at midnight. I'm asking that we leave together and be together always. Pier 48, midnight. Yes. Don't be late. Oh, well, darling, don't be late. And will I live happily ever afterward? Forever and ever. Forever and ever. <laughs> Cab, Miss Foyle? Oh, uh, yes, please. You're going to be gone long, Miss Foyle? Yes, permanently. We don't get many pretty girls here at the hotel. We might be sorry to lose you. <laughs> oh, Sam. Yes? I think that a young man will call for me a little after midnight. Yes, Miss. He'll be quite excited, I think, very insistent. Yes? I want you to tell him that, um, that I admire him very much. And that I always will. Just a minute. I better write this down on my pad. You admire, admire him very much. And, and tell him that I'll never forget him. You will never forget him and... And tell him that I'll always love him in a very special way. You'll always love him in a... And then tell him that I'm being married tonight. You're getting married tonight? Hey, what is this? Wait to, miss. St. Timothy's Hospital, please. No, no. I've had enough of sleigh riding. Goodbye, Wynne. Goodbye, dear. But here's where I get off. <laughs> Today, medical science moves with incredible swiftness. Even before the miracles of penicillin were completely charted, work was going forward in a scientific laboratory on another similar substance called streptomycin. What is streptomycin? It is a powerful drug science has taken from the earth itself by painstaking and complicated extraction processes. What does streptomycin contribute to the conquest of disease? It is effective against certain deadly germs that even penicillin doesn't conquer. With streptomycin, as with penicillin, squib scientists are working in the forefront of progress, cooperating with other scientists all over the world in the effort to discover and prove all that streptomycin can do and to make it available as soon as possible to every doctor. For the squib idea for nearly a century has been to strive ceaselessly in the cause of health. And through its endless quest for perfection, squib has earned its reputation everywhere as a name you can trust. Next week, another great picture. The House of Squibb will present Academy Awards starring one of Filmland's most distinguished actors, Mr. Paul Muni, in his Academy Award winning performance in The Life of Louis Pasteur. Next week, it is Academy Awards starring Mr. Paul Muni in The Life of Louis Pasteur. Ginger Rogers appeared in Kitty Foyle tonight through the courtesy of RKO Radio Pictures, producers of The Spiral Staircase. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night until next week at the same time when the House of Squibb invites you to join us for Academy Awards. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>